Since I last saw you, I have had Invisalign fitted. So I think I told you that I was really keen to get Invisalign and why am I being so awkward? <laughs> yeah, I had Invisalign fitted on Monday. It's now Friday. So I've had it for five days and it has been a bit of an adjustment. It was a little bit painful the first couple of nights, weirdly less so in the daytime. So I have some attachments on the teeth to help them move into place. Obviously my Invisalign isn't in, in right now because I'm drinking and eating. A couple of the attachments have fallen out, which is really frustrating. I'm gonna go in on Monday to have them refitted and hopefully they won't fall off again. But I've already noticed some movement on the bottom. The process of getting them fitted was fine. The only thing that is a bit uncomfortable is I had to have a file in between my two lower bottom teeth. And this just basically, get ready, kind of files away some of the tooth to create more space. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not like the most pleasant, but I'm already seeing results after five days. So yes, I am, I should be aboard the ship. They've, they've told me 13 weeks. A couple of you slid into my DM saying I was told a short amount of time and I've now had them for a year. So hopefully it actually will be 14 weeks, but I will just keep you posted with my progress as I go. The way I've divided it so far this week is I keep my retainers in for any kind of casual content. So you will be seeing them here and I keep them on for like my Instagram stories and stuff, but then I take them out for um, any kind of public speaking. So I had a panel earlier, earlier this week that I hosted. I took them out for that and then I will take them out for kind of TikTok videos and that kind of thing. And that flexibility is really nice, but I do get a little bit anxious about whether or not I'm keeping them in for long enough, even though they're in literally all the time. I think I probably have them out for about two hours a day. I've seen friends earlier this week and I felt fine just saying like, bear with me because I'm adjusting to it and I just kept them in for seeing friends. Anyway, that's the Invisalign update. Okay, so here we go. I just put the bottom one in. As you can see. And then just putting the top one in. I put a new retainer in once a week for the next 13 weeks. And you can recycle these with TerraCycle, side note. And um, I go into the dentist about once a month. This is what they look like when they're in. And I'm gonna try and talk, like basically the issue is, is that there's lots of saliva um, being produced in my mouth that I'm not so used to. And I have to make sure that I take some deep breaths and swallow lots so that I don't dribble. Uh, but apart from that, they it, I like how they look, to be honest, I think they look absolutely fine. It's just speaking saliva. My lip kind of catches on a little bit to the top, but generally speaking, it's a-okay. You wash them with a kind of like rinse aid where I've been using a bit of bicarbonate of soda um, in the evening. So I do that while I'm having my dinner. Anyway. Hello, I'm back. Uh, the retainer is in and I hope that's okay. Um, I'm just rehashing my phone charm as I dropped my phone and my phone charm string snapped. So I'm just redoing this. And I thought this would be a great opportunity to talk to you about this month's film. You may know that I'm part of Sky Skin... Sky Skinner... Sky Skinner... You may know that I'm part of Sky... Cinema 
club and each month I get to review a film that is on Sky right now and this month is quite different. This month's film is, get ready for it, Dune. Yes, Dune. As in the blockbuster. Now, I have to be completely honest with you. I'm not much of a blockbuster gal. I am not much of a sci-fi gal. It's embarrassing to admit on a public platform, but I've never seen Star Wars. So going into this, I was like, I'm gonna try and be open-minded. I'm gonna see how I go. I really enjoyed it. Really, really enjoyed it. It's a bit epic, it's two and a half hours. So I actually am very happy to have watched it at home because I personally like to have toilet breaks and snack breaks. And when you can pause a film like this, because there's nothing worse than being desperate for the loo and knowing you can't rush out of the cinema. So I was very, very happy to be watching such an epic film at home. And I must say, I just thought it was brilliant. It's quite a complex story. And I think what they do quite successfully is establish this complicated story in two and a half hours. But there were definitely moments at the beginning where I had to pause and lean over to my sister's partner and say, hey, where are we at? And she had to explain it to me. Um, so yes, for a novice, there is quite a lot to get your head around. I was most excited for Zendaya's performance. And one of the kind of downsides of the film for me is that I didn't get to see enough of her, but it's okay. Zendaya will come. Timothy Chalamet's performance, he plays the lead. He is absolutely fantastic. He is so, so good in it. And I really enjoyed his performance. I thought it was really, really valid. It's a completely different world. And I thought they did a really great job of creating that world. Um, it was epic. Like the proportions of this new world are incredible. And another of my favorite, favorite parts of this film was there seems to be this kind of underlying criticism of the oil industry and of capitalism more widely. And it's a lot about how indigenous people are being exploited. And obviously I was all over that because that is reflective of the world that we live in. There were some really scary, scary moments, um, some really surprising moments. And also I must say, I often find that with epic films, and this is something sometimes why I don't enjoy them, I often find that they are too intense or they don't move fast enough. And the pace of this one I found really, really impressive. It moved at just the right speed. It kept you on your toes and I really, really enjoyed the pace. Please excuse me because this is me being quite a novice when it comes to sci-fi. I was hopeful that because this is set in a different world and a different time, super ahead in the future, I was hopeful that that would mean that there was less kind of heteronormativity, gender conformity, and unfortunately that wasn't the case. It sticks quite strictly to, yeah, gender conformity and, and heteronormativity. And I, I don't know, I would have liked to have seen slightly, something slightly more progressive. That's just me. I know the book was written about 50 years ago, so, there are probably reasons why that, that decision was made. There are some powerful female characters in there, which we love to see. And I, I, to be honest, I need a powerful female character in a film if I'm going to really invest in it and, and enjoy it. Otherwise I'm just like, like there's nothing worse to me than a film just fill, filled with men. Not really doing much, but this film is not like that. So do let me know if you've watched it and let me know what you thought of it. I would absolutely love to hear it in the comments. And if you know of any sci-fi films that are pretty epic, but also have strong, powerful female leads, perhaps aren't so into gender conformity and are a bit more progressive, do let me know in the comments as I would love to hear. back, back in action. 
I'm finally going to talk to you about books. I feel like this has been a very long time coming and we have quite a lot to get through. So I'm gonna dive straight in. I'm going to start with a non-fiction. This is I Belong Here, A Journey Along the Backbone of Britain by Anita Sethi. Anita is a really accomplished journalist and this is a part memoir about her exploration of the Pennines, walking across England and Really, it's a story of reclamation. Unfortunately, Anita faced a really horrendous racial attack on a train. This story is about her coming to terms with her identity and how, if you're not white in England, um, the countryside and being outside in nature can be a really, really strange place to be. I would really recommend the work of the activist Maya Rose Craig, who talks a lot about how um, outside spaces are not as inclusive and diverse as they need to be. And nature and being outdoors should be for every single person of every single background. And it's so important that we collectively connect to nature. Um, and this is just a really, really gorgeous, beautiful book. If you are someone who loves reading about landscapes and rolling hills and biodiversity, you will really enjoy this. I'm quite new to this genre and yeah, I really, really enjoyed it. It's a really interesting one because when she was describing to the awful, awful attack that she faced on, on this train. I of course wasn't surprised because we know that racism is so rife here in the UK. And but also because I have been on a train plenty of times where really horrendous stuff has happened. I think trains are such a great way to see a place. They're obviously really environmentally friendly um, and they can be a gorgeous way to see beautiful countryside and landscapes. But because they are also a space where drunk men love to be awful and drunk act in their usual drunk men way, they can be really, really awful and they can feel really... Um, claustrophobic and yeah so this is quite a quite an emotional story and I really felt like I was walking in Anita's shoes as opposed to kind of next to her um, she's a really really talented writer and this is a really important book and I feel very grateful to have picked it up and read it so I would highly recommend this book Next up, we have another memoir. And if you are yet to read this and you love food and you love Stanley Tucci, this is a sign for you. I actually heard excerpts of this on Radio 4 back in December and just was completely taken with it. Absolutely loved it. So I decided to pick up a copy. I also watched Stanley's show about Italy at a similar time. So I just had a real kind of Stanley Tucci bubble. And I also gave this to Max who couldn't have loved it more. It is such a funny, heartwarming book about Stanley, his life, his career, and of course, food. Um, he is just so lovable and so charismatic. And he's been through a lot. He's been through some really dark times. Um, so it is really uplifting in places too, but also quite emotional. Um, I just love him. It's really, really hard not to love him. And this is a really wonderful book. Next up we are going to i think my favorite book that i have read this year and that is detransition baby by the remarkable tori peters oh my gosh this book this book is so so good i i was almost in disbelief as I was reading it. I just couldn't get enough of it. It is just so fantastic. So Tori Peters is actually trans and this is a book about the trans experience and trans love. I don't wanna get the story wrong so I'm just gonna give you a very brief backdrop to it. It is about a character called Reese who nearly had it all, a loving relationship with Amy, an apartment in New York, a job she didn't hate. She'd scraped together a life Previous generations of trans women could only dream of. The only thing missing was a child. Then everything fell apart and three years on, Reese is still in self-destruct mode, avoiding her loneliness by sleeping with married men. When her ex calls her to ask if she wants to be a mother, Reese finds herself intrigued. So it is about motherhood, but from a slightly less covered perspective like like the ones we usually see in the media and it is a fascinating story it's a hugely important story it is so nuanced 
it is funny, it's compelling, it's captivating, it is just so exhilaratingly good, I cannot recommend it enough. I would say that if you were to read one fiction this year, make it this one. I honestly am obsessed with it, I will definitely read it again. I think Tori is probably the best writer I have come across in recent years. It is almost as though words, her writing makes you feel as though these words just slip off her tongue. And I think that is like nothing feels forced. Nothing feels like she's trying. It just feels like these words just come out of her like slippery liquid. And it's just so good. I loved it. I learned a lot. I like characters that are quite dark and this is a theme this is a theme of today's book lineup like a lot of these characters are quite dark in these fiction books which leads me really really nicely on to how to kill your family by bella mackey the premise of the book is in the title it is about the main character grace bernard killing various members of her family but it is not as horrendous as the title would make you believe because some of the people in her family are really awful her father who is the kind of main character that she's out to get is a fast fashion mogul slash ceo he reminded me heavily of philip green and obviously i really really enjoyed the kind of critical lens through which she sees fashion and multi-millionaire slash billionaire ceos and grace is not altogether all that likable but i am very here for unlikable female protagonists i think it is super important um, i don't think every character we read has to be likable and i think it's fun to read unlikable characters but she's kind of awesome as well and this is very much an examination of the british class system which bella mackey does so fantastically and it's also a criticism of the patriarchy and it's just a really really good page turner i would highly recommend this if you are going on holiday actually it'll be a really really good beach read and i really enjoyed it i'm actually going to lend this to max next as i think he's going to enjoy it a lot yeah it just gives you a really good insight into our weird weird class system here in the uk so i love this and i will continue to read bella mackey Oh, we're getting through these quite quickly. Penultimate book of this list is My Thoughts Exactly, which is another memoir, this time by Lily Allen, who is a British songwriter and musician. It's quite a few years old. It was written, I think, in 2018 or 2019. So I'm quite late to the party. This was actually lent to me by my editor, Georgia. I adored it. I absolutely loved it. And I loved the structure of it. I found it so readable. She has been through so much like she has had a pretty horrendous time obviously she's had a lot of fame and a lot of money and a lot of success but she's also been through some really really dark times i just love how she divided this book um she took a specific kind of theme for an entire chapter and then just writes about it in such a raw honest way it almost takes you aback so she's written about things like her career her education her relationship with her dad fame, Glastonbury, being a celebrity, sex, money, love, um, pleasure. Obviously, I think she does a lot of work about um, sex toys and female pleasure now as well. Assault and mental health. And it is honestly one of my favourite memoirs I think I've ever read. I could not put it down. I found myself kind of um, doing little gasps. I stayed up one night until one o'clock in the morning reading this. If you know me, that is quite late. I think I read it in three days. I honestly adored it now count myself as a fan of lily allen i just think she's really really talented and it's just so refreshing to hear someone speak so honestly and i loved it we've now changed angles because my camera got too hot i needed some time to chill just to wrap up about lily if you're someone who is interested in like i am fame and celebrity culture and what that is like for someone who has really really been through it especially at the point at which the British press seemed to be their worst when they were pitting women against each other, when they were constantly scrutinising women's weight, which I know they still do, but it seems that she went through it at the point which it was at its worst. This is so, so good. It's so insightful. And I honestly loved it. Like it's one of, like I say, it's one of my favourite memoirs I've ever read. And I'm very grateful for Lily's work. I think she's amazing. And she's also really honest about how she's got stuff wrong. Another thing I loved about it is she's really open about the fact that she's got stuff wrong and she's done some really problematic stuff. But she then talks about how she's learned from that and what she would do differently in the future. And 
I'm here for that. And finally, we have one more fiction. This is My Year of Rest and Relaxation by Atessa Moshfeg. Wow, oh wow. This was kindly lent to me by my friend Lottie and I am enjoying it so much. I actually am about two thirds of the way through. I thought I would get it in now because who knows when we'll do another book update and by that point it will it will feel like a distant, a distant memory. I have a really terrible memory. That's for another video. So this book is set in 2000 in New York and the protagonist is unnamed. She is young, thin, beautiful, and she works in an art gallery in Chelsea in Manhattan. The main character, who is unnamed, decides that she wants to sleep for a year and she does that by taking prescription drugs and she has a kind of strange relationship with her best friend, Reva. She is grieving the loss of both of her parents. She hasn't had very much success romantically and it is one of the most surprising books I have read for a long time. I'm not racing through it like I do a lot of books. I feel like I'm taking my time. And that is because it is quite surprising. And it's not really the kind of book that I would want to race through. I would recommend it. I'm finding it really, really compelling. And um, I am taking my time with it, but I'm really enjoying the process. So if you have read this book or anything else by Atessa, do let me know what you thought in the comments as I would really, really love to hear. So that brings us to the end of our bumper book special. I just quickly want to mention where I buy books from because I get asked this a lot. So I do choose to buy books new as the majority of the books I read are by women, women of color or marginalized folks. And this is just a way that I can support their work. So when I do buy books, I buy them from my local bookshop or bookshop.org, which supports local bookstores. I will leave that linked in the description box. I also use my local library and I swap books back and forth regularly with friends so they get lots of use and I also resell my books on as well if I don't want to keep them. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. It's been really fun hanging out with you and let me know what you're reading at the moment. I'd love to hear about it and I will see you soon. Bye.